So I'm here as part of our Lancashire Sparks project and I'm really excited to meet Phil and learn a little bit more about this amazing space and what happens in here and, and all the clogs that he's going to make for us, which is quite a large number, isn't it, Phil? It's a very large number. For, for, for one person like me who normally makes one pair of clogs a day, you coming along and saying, can you make us 150 pairs? It's a lot. How long have you been making clogs for? I've been making clogs full time since January 2007. You don't get it right every time. Right. So I always say I learnt by the bin. If it didn't work, toss it in the bin, make it again. There's um, a, a whiff of leather in the air and, and there's lots of leather hanging up. So can you tell us about how you cut that out? Here we've got one of the uppers and what we've got there is a flat bit of leather that's been added to another flat bit of leather. We've got eyelets in there with a heel reinforcement to make it a little bit stiffer and then that's going to form the upper. On my way into the workshop today up the stairs um, I noticed lots of blocks of wood outside so I'm guessing they're the starts of a pair of clogs. We start with a plank of wood, I use sycamore, which is a hard wood and it makes a nice noise. So they're stacked up, being seasoned, ready for me to use. That goes down into the woodworking area and we cut out the soles. We cut it out sideways, we cut it out round, dish it out to sort of a bit of a curb, make it comfortable for the foot, and then put this rebate. And this ridge that goes round is where the leather sits, and you can see it on this one, that the leather sits in to that and so there's an extra bit of wood that you can't see that's hidden by the leather. We made the wooden sole and I've stretched this over a last. That's the wooden mould inside. And this is a clog last, so it's got a big cast. It's got a big curve at the front, so it rocks when you walk. And I've taken these flat bits of leather and I've wet it in a bucket and I've stretched it over that last to make that shape to get the toe there. And then what I'm going to do next is trim the leather and then you see all these nails here, different ones for different places. I'm gonna knock those in until we've got a completely finished clog ready to go and take the last out and we're away. Fantastic. So Phil, I've heard many different stories about where clog dancing came from. So what do you think? Back in the medieval period, they had such a thing as a, a pattern uh, and this is sort of my interpretation of it. And it was a piece of wood with a leather strap. And when you went outside, you put your shoe oh, with your right. foot inside so you got some protection because it, your shoe was basically a piece of leather that wrapped around it. Now that's developed from there into the clog we know today. And this was agricultural wear back in the 1600s. And then as the industrial revolution came in, people moved into the factories and they still wore clogs because they were cheap and they were strong. And when you're working with machinery, you naturally tap your feet and people started to tap the feet to the machines. I just wondered as well if we could put a little mark on a clog so that we mm. can try and find them in our clogging sessions later this year. Okay, well there's one that's waiting to be nailed up. It's one of yours. And uh, a red pen. So should we go for a rose or a spark? What do you think? Oh, a rose. Oh gosh. A Lancashire rose. Yes. There we go. Okay, brilliant. We'll look out for that, thank you. We'll pop that away and then you'll see that again when they come back to you when they're finished. Brilliant.